In this video, we're going to be talking about the grievance procedure. The ACAS code of conduct covers them both together, and a lot of principles apply across both the disciplinary and the grievance procedure. So what's the difference? Well, the disciplinary procedure is where management, the business makes a decision that somebody has breached their rules and therefore takes action. The grievance procedure is an employee raising a grievance, a complaint against their employer. Now, ideally, and in most cases, these will be done informally. Employees have gripes all the time. They should be raising them informally and we should be able to resolve them informally wherever possible. But there will be occasions where that's not possible, either because there's such a difference of opinion between management and the employee, or for some reason somebody isn't resolving in the way that they should be, or perhaps it's such a serious matter. So let's say a bullying harassment, for example, really serious and somebody may want to go straight to a formal grievance. So you should have a grievance policy which tells employees what they need to do should they have a formal grievance to raise. And if they have a formal grievance, they need to put it in writing. So when somebody's raising a, a grievance, we're talking formal, they've put it in writing, they've said they've got concern and they are raising this under the grievance procedure. Your grievance procedure should then dictate what happens next and it should follow the ACAS code which is that the individual will be invited to a meeting. This should not have any delays. We should be doing this as quickly as we possibly can, but it is a formal meeting, so we need to write to them. We need to remind them of their rights to be accompanied, and this is either by a trade union representative or a colleague. And we need to make sure that at that meeting, we've got notes being taken. At the grievance hearing, we're expecting that individual to really come and explain what their grievance is and give us more details about that. Now, hopefully we've got some of that in writing beforehand, and that will mean that you can plan some of the questions that you need to ask. You can look through their letter, look for gaps in what they've told you, things that you need to clarify to help you prepare for the grievance hearing. But they will be bringing to that hearing their evidence, their grievance their concern and there will not have been an investigation beforehand so unlike a disciplinary where we've done that investigation beforehand we haven't done that with a grievance and it may be that investigation isn't even needed we may have that hearing we may be able to have a short adjournment go away check a couple of things come back give an answer and resolve it that quickly and if that can be done great many occasions more will need to go into it and an investigation will be needed and in which case we would adjourn the grievance hearing. We would tell the individual what's going to happen, what we're doing, rough time frames for doing that, and tell them when we're going to come back to them with a response and how we're going to do that, whether we're going to reconvene a meeting, whether we're going to do it in writing. So just to recap the process, somebody writes in with a formal grievance. We invite them to a grievance hearing and we do that without unreasonable delay and we give them the right to be accompanied. We hear their grievance, we find out the facts, we get as much information as we can from them and then we adjourn that meeting before coming back to them with the outcome. And it may be that there's an investigation in that time to allow us to come back with a full outcome that means we've considered all of the facts. We should write to them with that outcome. They should be formally told that. So even if they're told verbally, we need to follow that up in writing. And you may decide just to write the outcome. You may decide to discuss it verbally and then follow up in writing. Either way is acceptable. It can be useful to talk things through with people, though it's always worth that open communication, thinking about that side of it. And then we must give the right of appeal. So just like with a disciplinary hearing, there is the right to appeal. So if the individual is not happy with the outcome of their grievance, they should be able to appeal to somebody who is at the next stage, to somebody who is more senior, who has the power, genuinely has the power to overturn the grievance decision that was made in the grievance hearing. And so it's always worth making sure that we've kept somebody back to do that. 